talk a little bit about newcomer orientation and some new student athletes coming on campus. Okay, we're getting ready to enter into the fall semester here. So if our athletes have not already made it to campus uh, at this point, we're going to have some new athletes coming on. So it's really important for us to coach if, as coaches to really consider what's happening with their, you know, they're, they're going to be away from home for the very first time. They're going to a university for the first time. Significantly different than a high school experience. Okay, so for us as coaches, we need to take that in consideration as we're programming and as we're teaching new concepts. I want to talk about teaching and installing different things for this, this newcomer population. We want to talk about progressing skills and progressing that teaching and, and opportunities for student athletes to learn. And we want to talk about physical development a little bit. Okay, when we're talking um, about installing new things. And when I say installing, it's basically just in, incorporating new things that, uh, that maybe the student athlete hasn't ever done before. Or installing, introducing something that we do here that may not be done elsewhere. Okay, so the culture or the vibe that's going on. The biggest thing once we're teaching or installing new skills is staying simple. There's no reason for me to provide an elaborate explanation of a physical skill or even a technical, tactical skill or concept in this early age. Let's be very simple. From a physical standpoint, we may say, hey, this is a squat. I want my butt back. I want my knees out, my chest tall. I want to lock into the bar at all times. I want to count. We're counting. We're counting. Okay, that may be an example. So now I'm giving instructions to an athlete. I'm showing exactly what's going on, and I'm talking to the group about how we're going to cue that as a crew and, and, and the cadence or tempo in which it's done. Okay, The next thing, kind of jumped into it a second ago, is I want to keep instruction differentiated. So differentiated instruction is basically providing instruction or teaching, it's teaching basically, teaching to a bunch of different audiences. We have a ton of different types of learners. We have learners that see things and get it right away. We have learners that are auditory learners that need to hear things. And we kind of have our psychomotor learners that actually has to get in, in the weeds and do it. Us as teachers, us as coaches, we actually have to intentionally shape the way we're talking, shape the way maybe we're moving and providing the lesson, providing the demonstration of a skill or a tactical technical skill uh, or concept so that these differentiated types of learners can understand it. An example here would be maybe I'm talking on the board and I've got some different things um, I'm, I'm pointing to. I'm talking about the skill providing a little bit of feedback and a little bit of background on it, but I'm staying simple and I may have a, a concept printed out for them. So if we're going through a warm-up and we're learning a new warm-up skill, maybe I have it printed out for them. I'm going to talk through it, then I'm going to demonstrate it, then we go into a practice opportunity. Okay, if it's a little bit more advanced skill, maybe I provide some footage um, from game film, from practice film. Or if it's a basic athletic skill, such as the weight room, maybe we're talking about it, we get hands on, and we actually practice the skill, and then we come back and we provide feedback to that. And that's what leads us into our next one. Feedback, especially for young athletes, it needs to be extremely specific. Okay? So there's two different types of feedback, and we've talked about this in other videos before, but the two different types of feedback are, are just basic general feedback, and that's basically to the group. Hey, good job, good job, or continue, continue. Hey, remember, knees out, knees out, knees out. I'm not talking to one specific athlete. I'm talking to the group, whereas specific feedback is, specific, is feedback geared toward uh, changing or maintaining a behavior on one or two athletes. The, the caveat here, in order to provide specific feedback, I have to be proximal or close to the athlete that I'm talking to. I can't be talking to athlete on rack one if I'm standing next to rack 20. I need to actually be proximal to that athlete, close to them, so that I can see what's going on, I can observe, and then I can provide feedback that's either going to continue that behavior or change that behavior. So when I'm teaching, I need to be simple. I need to differentiate or teach, be able to teach to a lot of different types of learners, and I want to be able to provide very specific feedback. You know, I'm not looking for the shotgun approach here. I'm looking to be a sniper. I want to provide feedback that's going to continue or change that behavior. All right, moving on to progression. So 
in this bottom level, let's say let's say we've tiered out our athletes into levels. Okay, so we have let's say a white group, which is introdu introductory athletes, our newcomer athletes potentially in white group. Let's say that's basic basic fitness. We're talking like let's say in the weight room, we're learning things, we're moving movements, learning movements. That's our white level. Next level, green. That may be a little bit more of an advanced strength athlete where they're trying to get a little bit bigger and a little bit stronger. Okay. The next one may be power. And then the top tier, your black black group athletes may actually have specific needs. Maybe they're going a specific direction. Maybe their position or time on the field, number of snaps, number of pitches, number of uh, minutes spent in their career dictates that their, their actual training is a little bit different. Okay, so let's say we have this scenario. As we're going up this pyramid here, we need to do what's called basically scaffolding learning. We need to scaffold or build layer on top of layer so that our athletes continue to grow. So if you think about a scaffold, like a construction scaffold, it's here and I have a person that has the ability to stand on top of the scaffold, okay? This first level of the scaffold represents basic skills, okay? Basic skills, basic understanding, things of that nature. This person can reach a specific level. Let's say he's laying brick. Let's say he's painting. We can reach a specific level with these basic skills. Now, subsequent lessons, subsequent uh, practice opportunities, training sessions, we'll put up another scaffold. Now my new guy, my, my painter, is not using the same basic skills, but I'm resting on those basic skills. That's my foundation. I'm using this new set of skills that I've learned and I've practiced. What we as coaches want to do over time is basically continue to build this scaffold up and up and up. So we're never getting away from things that we've learned in the past. We're building on them. If you want to think about it a little bit three-dimensionally here, you can actually get things wider. Okay. So maybe everything is interconnected. So I'm not just looking on one track of learning or education or physical competencies, but I'm linking physical competencies together. Maybe this track right here is the physical. Maybe this track right here is your technical tactical. And then maybe this one right here is knowledge about recovery. So we have a ton of different tracks of knowledge going on. We have a ton of different tracks of uh, experiences, learning opportunities for our student athletes, and they're building together. They're building toward the main thing. And the main thing is the development of an athlete that can handle their body in space while being free from injury and also being happy and enjoying what we're doing. Okay? And going into that, we want to accumulate. During this phase here, when we're actually linking different areas together and creating an accumulation of volume, we want to accumulate both sideways and vertically. I want to have great experiences. I want to be able to move well. I want to be able to handle demands of training, handle the demands of practice, handle the mental demands of learning the, technic, the technical and technical aspects of what's going on within our sport. And I want to be able to handle the, the social aspects of, of the university experience. Okay, so when I'm progressing athletes, a lot of times, uh, especially this white group level, this, this bottom group, this introductory group, a lot of the, the volume, especially from a weight room standpoint, doesn't really change very much. Oftentimes, we do a lot of sets with fewer reps, okay? So if you, t if you pull up a textbook, it's often uh, prescribed out maybe three by 10, three by eight. So I want to accumulate volume. Well, that's great, but the sets are so few, there's not a lot of coaching opportunities in there. If I only have three sets of eight, there's only three or four coaching opportunities there how you look at it. If I have five, six, seven sets of two, five, six, ten sets of three, there's many more coaching opportunities there. There's more opportunities for the athlete to self-coach themselves. And if we can coach each other to coach each other, we have subsequent opportunities for the other athletes to coach themselves. So we want to, in this, in this basic phase right here, we want to think about using more sets, okay, and fewer reps to accumulate our overall volume. At this point in time, if we're thinking intensity, so how 
how, how maybe heavy or the intent that it's moved at. We want to be laser focused in terms of technique so that we can pattern that skill and reproduce it over time when we do add weight, but we want the weight to be very, very light. That's gonna allow us to uh, dial in different types of patterns. It's gonna allow our athlete not to freak out being under a weight that they've never been under, and it's gonna allow us to really work toward accumulation. Okay, so looking at the general setup, let's say we have a section here where we'll just look at two lifts, or two workouts, if we will, and A and a B. You know, you may have A, B, C, D, E throughout a week. It may be a four day, it may be a three day, it may be a six day or seven day, and that's fine. Okay, but let's just look at two. In order to accumulate, what we can often do is work on just basic uh, things that teachers typically do in, in, in the classroom. Okay, so let's say I'm going to intro topic A. Okay, so day one, lift one, or week one, lift one, we're basically going to intro a skill. Let's say that right there is a clean pull. Let's say we're going to clean pull from the blocks above the knee. Okay, so we're going to intro this topic. We're going to look at some practice opportunities. We may do this on cadence with the whole team. We, we may have a coach kind of calling cadence, whatever that may be for you. And at the very end, we may have a review. That review may be at the very end of the training session. It may be call everybody up at the end of that lift or that, that, uh, that part on the template or that section on the template and talk about. We're going to provide specific feedback based on what we saw. Okay. So now after this day one's installed and we move to the lift two, what we'd ideally like to do is review what we did the day before. So we'll just say review topic A. So maybe we come right back with the clean pull and that sometimes can violate what we see in a little bit more advanced skills or advanced levels of athlete on the way when we may have a high low split or an upper lower split or even a total body where we may not use the same exercise over and over. But with these athletes, remember we're installing something that's brand new. So the frequency that we can continue to come back to this and maybe more importantly, um, how quickly we can, maybe it's the next day or the day after that. If we can get back to this really quickly, it's gonna really help us retain that and, and remember it and build that skill. So maybe day one, we review skill A. We have a quick opportunity to do that. Maybe it's a little bit faster tempo. Maybe it's player run as opposed to coach run. We come back and review it and then we intro topic B and that may be a new skill and we treat it just like we did here. After that, it's just like a circle. I'm gonna review. Oop. I'm gonna review what we did there with B, maybe even A or embed it in the lift, and then I'm gonna intro the next one. This guy right here, once we get to there, we're gonna review, and we're gonna intro. Review, intro, introductory, introduce. Okay, so we're gonna basically review what we did in the past, introduce. Now, another thing that you may actually do too, not to get too complicated, you could review on any given day, introduce or practice and then preview what's coming so let's say before the lift we come up and we say hey yesterday was a big speed power day we worked on sprints we worked on med ball tosses we hit the big clean pull and the squat today we're going to do the same thing except i want to really dial in our clean pulls from below the knee now. Yesterday we were above the knee if you remember. Now our squats, we're gonna go to a different pattern. We're gonna try a kettlebell squat. We're gonna call a landmine squat, work, work on a landmine squat. Okay, so then we complete our section. We complete our lift, our training section, our session. Then at the very end, we review what we just did. And then we say, hey, good job today. Now tomorrow, we're gonna move on to our B workout and we're gonna do X, Y, Z. So now I have a review from the past I have my current and I have a look to the future. If we do this over time, it can really help our athletes build this accumulated model of our scaffold. Okay.
Final thing we'll talk about, the main thing of working with a new athlete coming along the way is teach them at a lower pace, maybe um, away from veteran influence or maybe away from the tempo or fast speed that you would normally train the rest of your team and allow them to be comfortable with what's going on. Hold them accountable to exactly what we want. There's an old saying, very cliche, if you're not coaching it, we're allowing it to happen. Okay, if I'm not coaching it, I'm simply allowing it to happen. So if something is important to you, whether it's starting, finishing, past the line, starting, finishing, fast, whatever it may be, tempo, call, whatever it may be, this is the point in time where you should slow it down okay, from a teaching perspective and dial in exactly what's going on. If we create positive habits at this level, we can then scaffold and build more complex habits or behaviors as we go up the way. All in all, the main thing is we want, we want it to develop athletes. Over time, it's a long-term process. We want to develop athletes that can go all the way up the pyramid and be successful. Okay? So in closing, when we were working with a new athlete, we need to remember it's a completely new experience for them. Even if they have a really high training age, it's very new for them on campus, meeting new people, the challenges, the tempo of the college sports experience. So when we teach, we need to be very um, sniper-based. We need to be simple. We need to teach to a bunch of different types of learners. And we need to provide great feedback that's specific to them and what they're actually doing. When we progress, we want to build tomorrow on top of what we did today. The next day on top of that, we want to be wide-based and we want to be big in what we're doing. And we want to make sure our athletes can handle the bottom levels before we stack other things on top. And then finally, we want to develop an athlete over time. So what's that, what's that look like for you? As a coach, what does your, your, your setup look like? What does um, the, your head sport coach want within that program? And then how do we teach that? How do we get the most out of our athletes over time?